All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to uh, thelongwall.com. If you've guessed it in this video, I'm going to talk about Carvana. I'm going to go through and talk about a few things. Number one, why I think this stock is probably a zero or at least a sub $20 stock at this point. I'm going to talk about the recent news in this stock that kind of changed the entire narrative and kind of give you guys a breakdown of what's been going on with this company uh, and why it's going to start to make headlines probably in the next two, three, four, five, six months. So, look, this video is going to be long. Let me just state, state it here. Um, it'll probably be 30 to 40 minutes. It's going to be a lot to go through, um, primarily because, again, and I don't want to say the term Ponzi, but um, when you have companies like this that are having issues, there's a lot to unravel. And a lot of the unraveling that goes into this takes a lot of explanation, and I'm going to try to do as best of, a best of job as I possibly can to explain to you why this company is doing what it is. Now, again, whether that's beneficial for you to, A, not buy the stock, to short the stock or C, maybe it just gives you general knowledge on how Wall Street works, how corporate structures work, give you some insight to debt and bond markets, whatever that is, hopefully it kind of gives you guys more knowledge um, watching this video than you left with. Okay, so that's my kind of goal of this video to get into it. It's going to be long, hang with me, because um, like I said, I was kind of writing bullet points and I was looking at them like, look, this is going to be like 30 or 40 minutes, but it's going to be good, hopefully, and we're going to dive into it. So look. Carvana, obviously, let's just kind of do a quick backstory on this. Um, everybody knows this company, right? I mean, it's kind of been a hit for a while. If you don't know the backstory of the company, it's interesting. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to save my personal opinions on what I think of the company. Personally, I'll try to stay away from it. I'll try to stick to facts in the video. But they kind of have the, the Carvana, the vending machines, right? You get the seven-day test to owns. You know, they finance in-house. Again, they have their own fin in-house financing company that the father um, owns with some other people. It's a really well-run machine from the outside, okay? Now, what I'm going to equate this company to before we start is WeWork. If you just watched the series, We Crashed, okay? This is the best thing. Not the best, but it's real similar to some of the tactics that were used. We, we work, in, you know, it was kind of flashy. that free beer. Um, you know, the work environment was cool. Like, you know, you had all this kind of like super millennial, you know, rah-rah kind of nonsense, in my opinion that made the company cool to work at, okay? I know people that have worked at Carvana. I'm from Phoenix. Um, the kind of same situation. They had, like, you know, um, and if you work there, no offense, right? I just know some people that did. But, you know, they had, like, like um, what do you call it? Like, bean bags and, like, kombucha and all this, like, drinks. And it was kind of a cool and fun work environment, like, outings, to make it kind of a, a cool, exciting environment to work at, okay? Now, again, is it real? I don't know. In my opinion, I, I don't think so. I think it's part of the overall kind of plan that this company's put together and maybe i'm giving the, the guys who runs this company too much credit but i don't think i am and as you i go through this video you'll see that these guys are really really smart um and kind of the whole schematic of this is kind of a bigger plan i think what these guys are doing and hang with me and i'll i'll, I'll kind of share the theory on this so again yeah, that's kind of the background of the company i even went and started testing this today because i was curious again not because it's helping my short position but you know, I, I was just curious about this. And I've been following it for a while. I went and tested a few things to see how this stuff works. Um, kind of went, and the, the website's pretty cool. And I'm going to talk about some insights to this and go through it. So this first caught my eye in particular, probably four or five years ago. Okay. So um, I know who these guys are mainly because I've been to a few like, um, what do you call it? I don't know, like events where the dad's been there. I've never met the son. I met the dad a few times um, at a few like charity events here in Phoenix is where I'm from. Um, and I kind of knew about this company. Now, I knew about the, the guy's past. If you haven't looked at, into their past, um, you can. I'm not going to say that, like, you know, people can't change, but a leopard never really changes their spots. And these guys aren't dumb. These are really, really smart people. Um, their whole team is smart. They think they have Dan Quayles, like, on their board of directors. It's a really interesting company, to say the least. Okay, now, the corporate structure is pretty convoluted. How they do things is convoluted. And when you really look under the hood, no pun intended on this, you start to see that like there's a lot of sketchy things going on. I had an idea a lot of sketchy things were happening with this company probably four or five years ago. Before the COVID pump on this particular stock, um, I kind of had an idea that things weren't on the up and up, right? Um, primarily because I've had friends who work uh, in this business that are big like um, luxury car and exotic car dealers in Los Angeles um, who kind of said some things about them that were like, hey, like, because I asked him, I was like, hey, what do you think about this, right? Because you guys work in this business. It's like, it's not my gig. Like, what? And they had some, you know, some things, interesting things to say nonetheless about this company, okay? So even before COVID, and I'm going to go through and, and 
break this down with you guys. Even before COVID, this company was not trading too well. Okay, so they were trading like I don't know, like eight dollars a share way back in eighteen. Like they really weren't doing too well. Um, kind of had a ramp there, and then obviously during COVID, you had this massive run up in the share price. Okay, and I'll explain some few things. We're gonna again, like I said, this video is gonna be long. The share price just ran up. Now it's just getting smoked. Um, and it'll probably go a lot lower than this, and I'll start talking through this. Okay, so. This was the whole situation during PPP and what happened during COVID. Well, used car prices went through the roof. I had this one car. Um, I bought it. I think I put like 30,000 miles in a year and a half. I was driving a lot between, I think, like here in California at the time. Um, and a lot of, I just did a lot of exploring in Arizona. And when I, before I left back to Puerto Rico, I was like, you know, I got an offer. Like, hey, we'll buy this from you. Plus, like more than what you paid for. I was like, yeah, sure. Take this car. I'll get another one when I get back. Okay. So. All through COVID, used car prices were through the roof, okay? And this is important to understand in, in this whole piece of the puzzle, Carvana stock, uh, and this industry in general, okay? So this thing thrived during all of this. Now, during all of this, and again, this isn't a case, a bear case. I'll get to the bear case later. You know, the insiders, especially the dad, was selling tens of billions of dollars. I think he sold $3.5 billion in six months. And these guys were, were selling a ton of shares. And not just like, you know, 100 mil, like they were dropping a lot of coin. And again, let me just be clear with this for like both sides of this argument. You know, when you own a company, you can do whatever you want. You can sell shares as much as you want. Like they're yours to sell. Okay. So it, is it suspect? Of course, when Angelo Mozilla, I remember in college in 2008, the guy was dropping shares. You know, I was like 20. I didn't know corporate structure or anything. I didn't know left from right when I was 2021, 20, but I was like, man, this guy's selling a lot of shares. It's weird, right? Maybe he just wants to make money. Okay. Obviously no, because these guys are selling shares as well. And there's reasons behind that that we're going to get into and we'll talk about it. But again, just because they sell shares doesn't mean that like the, the company is a short. OK, and we're going to talk about it as we progress. Now, this particular stock um, has been on the short tracker for a while. OK, now I put out the long vol report and I think it's been there for two or three months. And again, going back to this, like I said, I've known about this for a while. But and I wrote this on my Twitter the other or I think today this morning. Even if you think a company is worthless or valuable, if you can't convince the world to like get into the groupthink method, it doesn't matter what it's worth. Okay, if you're the only person like, hey, you know, a lot of people for a long time, for example, um, on like Enron were calling, like, hey, this is a short, this is like fraud, fraud. Like they, t nobody was like, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. It took a long time f for the markets as an aggregate to see that happen. Okay, it's the same thing for buying a stock. Okay, I'll give you an example, not to like knock GMC or GME or AMC, look, same situation. I mean, not similar in them losing money, but on the preferred or secondary offerings, like AMC and GME, okay? Nobody knew about those stocks until everybody knew about those stocks, and they traded higher more than likely because everybody just wanted to buy it. It's the same thing right now with Carvana, why it's going to start taking more heat. Now, originally, our price target was 55 to 65. I'll get into that later. The stock's already there. This is going to go to a zero, in my opinion. And I'll explain two dozen one. Okay, so there's already things I knew about this company, but really what started to turn my head on this was, and I'll go through this here, is th their corporate credit got put on review from Moody's a few months ago. Okay, so this was like, and again, I'm going to get through this. There's another deck here that I'm going to go through not, uh, in a few, but, you know, I'm, I don't, don't want to register, log into that. But um, there was an issue with, with their corporate credit. Number two is that the auction sale started to slow. Okay. And I had friends again, going back to LA, they're like, Hey, look, things are starting to slow down. Just giving you a heads up. Like, you know, auctions are starting to slow. Sales are slowing. I was like, ah, okay. And there's some things going on that they're running out of money, which matters more than any of this stuff here. And I'm going to explain in a second. Okay. So this goes back to this other argument. And I was on here and I was going through this. Um, let me go through this here. Stock analysis. And I was looking through this before I made this video. Like, normally the time I'll look at some of these videos to see what these guys are saying. And again, a lot of this stuff gets it wrong. And this goes back to part of this video or this channel is, again, like this is not happening. This is so bad. And this is from Yahoo Finance, okay? So it goes back to what I try to teach and, and preach on this channel is, you know, you can't listen to a lot of journalists because a lot of this stuff is clickbait, okay? You know, this is clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. Um, even these guys I watch, they seem like nice father and son, but they got a lot of things wrong in the video. And I mean, I don't think it's on purpose, but they got some things wrong, okay? So going back to this here, and this particular gentleman, and I watched this one, and again, <laughs> and this is what blows me away okay so again i'm not knocking this guy 
too much, but allegedly this guy manage, manages a fund, okay? Now, going back to this, right, he's talked about why they are buying buying um, Carvana, okay? This is the worst investment, and it, it blows me away because I see stuff like this all the time, and the main argument for them buying Carvana um, was essentially, again, the main argument was pretty straightforward. It was that used car sales were booming, okay? Now, I'm going to explain to you something here, and this is where it's going to get interesting, and this is where the thesis, it's not a thesis, this is factual. This company goes to zero. It's its a zero, okay? It's like impossible for them to save face, um, and we'll talk about it, okay? So the thesis was used cars are going through the roof, and you can look at data, right? And this is where sometimes looking at data and looking at a company that, you, that operates in that market, you have to separate the idea, okay? Here's a simple example. Just because you go to Starbucks coffee shop and you're like, look, the line's always long. You don't know what they're doing in M&A in their corporate finance side of the business. You don't know if they're losing money, but you see the lines are long. Same thing with Carvana. If you only look at the data at the front facing perspective, you're like, hey, look, used car prices are through the roof, right? And they keep going higher. Well, that must translate into Carvana because they're a used car seller that they're doing well. And this is was the thesis from a lot of the stuff on YouTube and a lot of people. And again, this guy's going to get smoked. Like these guys, I mean, this this company goes to, it's not to bail. This goes to zero. And in 12, 13, 14 years of doing this, in 2011 and 13, I was a short seller for a pretty notable family office, okay? Now, we looked at like a lot of the internal stuff of companies and how they operate, like the debt, especially debt stuff. And I'll talk, I'm going to get to Carvana now. But people would always be like, yeah, it's not, you know, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. And typically when people make a bigger deal out of something that, that um, or try to argue against your idea when it's, it's you know, still clearly like evident, it, it's something is going to happen, right? There's a, a bigger thing that's going to unfold, okay? So you and you, you saw this throughout the, the, the whole COVID situation. Used cars are booming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and they're crushing. But what happened to Carvana? And the reason I'm going to bring this up is, is during the coronavirus situation, this company should have been crushing it, okay? These guys had earnings a few weeks ago, okay? It's not like they had earnings, um, you know, a, a year ago. The, a few weeks ago, these guys reported earnings, and they missed, okay? The, 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 literally, the stock came in, and we're going to go to here, and I'll, I'll talk about it here in a second. The stock came in, and they missed after hours in trading. And this is where it's going to get interesting, and now I'm going to start to explain to you guys why this is in trouble in, in this part of the video. So these guys come out, they report earnings. Okay, their earnings were, were terrible. Okay, there was nothing good about them. And they basically blamed COVID headwinds for lack of sales. Okay, this is a company that they sell used cars. In, in what world um, should you have a hard time during COVID to, to sell cars? You shouldn't, right? So this was it. The earnings were here. After hours when they reported the news, the stock dropped to like 65, 70. Okay, then, and this is where it gets interesting, the stock rally the next morning or after hours. So it was down like 30% and then it pushed 30% higher. Now I'm going to explain to you why this happened. And from there, it's still going to go lower. Okay. So what happened after hours? They report earnings, even with used cars going through the roof. Um, obviously chip shortages with China, new, new cars are hard to get. There's a strong market for it. Okay. But the companies has a lot of fraudulent and suspect things going on. Okay. My opinion, I want to be clear with that. So what happened with that? So earnings come out, they come out and it's going to go through here and I'll explain to you what happened. Okay. So they went through and they were like, look, we're gonna have to do a few things. We need to issue $1 billion of preferred equity. Now, if you don't understand what preferred equity is, I'll try to make it real simple. Okay. They're out of money. This Carvana is out of operating capital, not out like, you know, like a dollar in their bank account, but they're low on operating capital. They've got to fund operations. Okay. So they, this isn't the first time they've done this. This is the second time they've issued preferred equity. AMC did this as well. So a lot of people watch AMC. And again, it, it's just, it's insane to me to make these arguments or even have to debate this because it's so evident. But they issued more equity, okay? They're only issuing equity because they need cash to operate the business. Now, here's where it gets interesting and where you want to pay attention to, you know, what's going on with this. The people that bought this equity, okay, 50% of the preferred equity that was purchased on this wasn't from the market at large. 50% of that purchased 
was directly from Ernie Garcia. He's the dad. He's not the son of this company. He came in and purchased 50%, actually it was like 48% if we're being fair, of the equity himself. Okay. So after hours, when they announced this, the stock gets smoked. It's not doing well. They announced the secondary offering. Um, he comes in and literally picks up 50% of that equity for himself. Okay. It's a ton of money. It, it, it's, a, it's a ton. So it literally causes the stock to rally. I'm looking at this. I'm like, you know, what what's going on? Like, I expected things to kind of have some issues because I knew they were out of cash. Car sales were slowing. I know the company, and I'll get into the background of the company in a second. They're losing money. Like, why is this stock even, there's no reason for this to rally. And I go and look. I'm like, oh, okay. That's what's going on. They issued a, issued a secondary because they're out of cash. He comes in and buys 50% of it himself. The market picks up 50% more. Okay, so what it does is it gives a temporary short squeeze on the stock, right? Now, again, whether it's a short squeeze or natural buying, it's up to debate. I don't think it's important for this video, but it pushes the stock higher, okay? So you have to hang with me here because this is where it's going to get a little complicated um, and we've got to kind of talk through it, okay? So that's part one. They issue equity because they're out of money, okay? So this is the easiest thing to understand. A lot of companies... Um, when they're out of money, they issue more shares or they do what? If you're operating, you know, Joe's pool cleaning business and you're out of cash, maybe you go to a loan from your buddy. And you're like, hey, look, I need a loan. Can you, you know, loan me 10 grand from my company? And your buddy's like, look, Joe, like, I don't know about the pool cleaning business. Like, you know, it seems a little tough here. Um, it's rainy season. Like, are you going to get sales? I'm not going to charge you 2%. I'm going to charge you 20 because it's high risk. Okay. So companies issue debt all the time. Carvana issued debt. Okay, so on the earnings, they're like, look, we, we need to issue a junk bond of $3.275 billion. Okay, so it was this, and there was also how they structured this. So typically junk bonds, again, a lot of people buy them. When you buy a junk bond, it, it's literally called junk bond for a reason. So if you're going to take the risk, you get paid a lot on the risk. Okay, so originally this junk bond was offered at 6%. Okay, so, you know, when the investment banks go and start calling their clients, you know, fixed income desks, um, bond desks, and like, look, hey, like, you know, we, we want, we're going to sell these bonds. Are you interested in picking them up? Right. They went in and did this and they were like, look, it's like 6% or 6.5% and nobody bid this. Like nobody was like, yeah, we're, we're just, we're not, we're not interested in this. Okay. So then they changed how the bond was going to get structured. Okay. So then it went to a five-year non-call bond. Okay, now again, I'm not, again, this is where I want to just be real clear with you guys watching the video. Um, I've never been fixed income, never been a bond trader. It's not my specialty. Uh, in the past, I've always, when I worked at, you know, back in 2011, 13, we had people that handled that stuff for us. There were guys on our desk where we had analysts or people that, you know, we would pay to analyze that stuff for us. I understand what that means in this particular term. It's not good to see this thing change. What's worse on this is, is when this changed from 10.5%, right? They couldn't sell this, okay? They could not get the bond sold at 10 and a quarter percent, right? They even talked about 10.5. Nobody was w willing to do the PIK, payment in kind. Nobody wanted it. The market was like, yeah, no dice. We're not taking this deal. It's over, okay? So when you see that, this is important to understand, the questions have to be, to be asked. Is, is it an issue of, you know, credit markets are tightening because you have the Fed raising high interest rates, the markets are uncertain right now. That's one reason that, that could be could be an issue, right? That's certainly one. Number two is, could it be that people understand that Carvana, you know, is in trouble? It's probably that, right? A lot of smart short sellers, um, and I'm going to show you a post by somebody who wrote something, did a really good job on this, um, talked about. So they couldn't sell their debt. Okay, so what ended up happening with this? So you can't sell the debt. You're having an issue selling it. Um, in fact, let me go over to... The problem is, is everybody's talking about this now. And I had this teed up. Let me pull up the other tweet. So here it is. So yeah, every, look, I'll talk about the second thing in a, or a few things in a second. But Carvana basically, okay, they issued this debt, okay? Nobody wants to buy it. So they go from $3.2 billion issuance to 1.5. Well, who buys the 1.5, right? The dad and his investment firm does. So they have an investment firm too that invests in the markets companies. They ended up buying the whole thing. So already that's terrible. Nobody wants to buy the bonds at... at, at Ten and a junk bond at ten and a half percent at three point two billion. Then they come in and have to buy the one point five. Now there's speculation as to why. You know, wh why would you drop all, not only five hundred million dollars 
of your own cash on um, basically, you know, buying A, your preferred shares are half it. And this isn't the first time they've done that. Why would you do that? And the second thing is, why would you drop 1.5 B on your bond offering? Okay. This one is probably, in my opinion, to save face, right? They pulled out tens of millions of dollars when the stock was trading, which I showed you earlier, in the 300s. They were selling tens of millions of dollars of the shares of that company. Okay, so what's 500 million bucks? To basically show the market, hey, look, you should believe in us still. Um, I'm going to drop $500 million in this. Like, I'm gonna, Here's a vote of confidence, okay? It's nothing. If you have to save the face of the company, it's not a big deal, okay? So the second thing is, why would you drop 1.5B on this? Well, they got really smart with this. Again, like I said, these guys aren't dumb. These are really smart people that run this company. Um, you know, they've played this game before. Now, again, the reason they needed this 1.5B, and I'll explain in a second, is they needed to buy Odessa. Odessa is a used car dealer or used car auction company um, they wanted to buy. Okay, but the interesting thing was, and again, we need to confirm this when we look at the... Um, bond documents or the SEC filings, whatever it is, and see exactly what happened. But this is a rumor and it seems to be true from across multiple sources, okay? Is that the way they structure this, okay? It's called a make whole provision, okay? Now, again, I'm not a bond guy. I'm not a, a fixed income. I don't know this arena well, okay? But this is interesting to me, the way they did it. And if this is true, which again, knowing these guys, it likely is. Um, and I, again, sent some emails out to some fixed income folks that have a better feel in this and they kind of confirm this. But if this is true, these guys essentially, right, if they issue the company at 1.5, they get the 1.5 back plus the interest. So if their interest on this is, it's pretty simple. If I lend Carvana 100 bucks today with 10% coupons, but if you go BK, you owe me your 100 bucks plus 10 coupons at 100%. So your claim is 200 bucks when it goes to bankruptcy court. Now, why does that matter? Okay, so if this goes bankrupt, which more than likely this company does, okay, and again, I'm not a bankruptcy attorney. I don't do event driven and, and BK. I understand a little bit about it um, from doing some. We took a, a golf company out of BK uh, two years ago. So I have a little bit of experience, but again, not at the level to speak at a level of confidence on it. But if they go bankrupt, they have a, a larger claim on assets of the company. Okay. So if their assets of the company allow for it, the cars, the real estate, the intellectual property, um, securitized loans that, that, that they have, it gives them a larger claim as a creditor to the company. So more than likely, they're probably going to get some of that money back, if not all of it, okay, through assets of the company. So they didn't just loan the company $1.5 billion to go and buy Odessa because they were, they were so friendly to the company, okay? They did it because nobody else, number one, wanted to take it, right? It's a junk bond. At 10.5%, nobody bid on this thing, right? It, it, and it, it, this, this kind of made the rounds last week uh, or Monday or around Twitter and people were talking about it. Um, and that was a big deal. Okay. So that's the first part of this is number one, they had to issue preferred shares, um, that caused the stock to spike and they had to buy their own debt to finance the company. Okay. So that's going to lead us to the next part of this is regardless of used car sales, regardless of this stuff here, none of this stuff matters. It makes zero difference in any of this stuff. Why this company's in trouble. We're going to get into it now. Okay. So I was actually messaging with this gentleman on Twitter, pretty smart guy. He only has 124 followers. Try to give him some love on this channel. Um, and again, Wall Street's kind of like, I guess, a lot of business. A lot of people that are smart going to the radar. Uh, this guy did a really good job of this. Okay, so I'm going to use it. Um, I actually messaged him because I read this and I was like, man, this, he did a really good job of explaining Carvana. Now, he wrote this in 2021. Okay, so this is December, January, February, March, April. Six months later and all this stuff holds true. Okay, so he talked about it here of why he thinks it's a Ponzi. He did a really good job of this, okay? A really good job. And he talked about it right here. The Carvana's out of money. And this is kind of what everybody knew for a while. But again, if you can't convince the world of what's going on, your stock price that goes higher or lower doesn't matter. Same thing with AMC and GME, okay? Th these guys have been in trouble for six months. Only now is the market at large starting to realize this. Okay, they already issued debt, okay? So they either cut costs, they haven't done that, or growth, because what did they do? They, they went out and they want to buy Odessa, the used car company, which is why they got the 1.5. So they haven't done this. They're doubling down. Literally, this is what's happening. They try to issue 
you can't get low risk debt. So they did what? They tried to issue high risk junk bonds. The junk bonds didn't sell. They bought their own junk bonds. Okay, so that's where we're going to start with this. And I'm going to go here and talk about a few things. And again, I'll link this. You guys can read through. I don't want to make this video two hours, but I'll talk about a few things in this. Okay. This is a background of the company. I don't think it's important right now. These are two different entities. Okay. Dry Times is a private company. Also does this pretty much the same thing. Carvana is their public company. Bridgecrest is one of their finance companies, along with another hedge fund on the back end, that these guys own a piece of. Okay, now where it gets interesting is how they structure the the the, the loans of the company. They they've securitized okay the loans, right? And this guy does a good job in this article. It's real similar to the Big Short with um, who's the guy from the Office? All those guys. It's real similar to what they've done with. And this guy explains it here. And this hasn't been a uh, secret. It's been pretty well known for a while. But again. And trading and investing, and this is why you don't see me talk about a lot of this stuff on the channel, or I can't short companies for too long because on ideas like this where, where Carvana is in trouble, th these are like big player shorts, right? Where guys that are running 100, 200 million, billion bucks, like, you know, these are big player shorts. Like, if you have a lot of money to throw in this, you can make a lot. And again, I'm not saying you can't make money in the puts, but you can because they've done really well and they should continue to do well. But... When you dive into data like this, it takes a lot of research. For me, when I trade the markets, trading futures or short-term options on things or volatility typically is a more direct way to make money. But it doesn't mean that you should ignore situations like this because there's still money to be made. Um, and it kind of makes it fun because there's interesting things that happen with this. Okay, So they have $200 million to service debt annually. So let's just talk about this. They issued 1.5. Let's say it's at 10% which means they have $150 million a year serviceable debt added to this debt there. Okay, so they already have to service this debt. Now, why would you buy, and this is a question you should ask, why would you buy Odessa? Why would you want to purchase the car auction company? There's a few reasons. Number one, if this goes bankrupt, they still own it for this, and they could basically... You know, if this, and my, I'll give you my opinion in a second. I think this was all, I think Carvana was designed to fail. Legitimately, I think this is a well thought out plan from these guys. I think this was designed to fail. I think this was their public vehicle where they took this, and again, they only took part of the company public. They took this company public for one reason, to raise money from public equity markets, to increase valuation and sell out shares. Um yeah, I think that's literally the reason. I think it, I don't think they thought it was going to go bankrupt, um, but I think they figured if it was going to go bankrupt, uh, what difference does it make? We still have drive time. Okay, I've made a whole bunch of money over here, right? I can cash out right off into the sunset and I still have this company here. Big deal, whatever. Okay, this company's never once made money. It's clear and present that that's been the case. Okay, so why would you buy Odessa? Odessa only, and again, this is, if you look at this, only gives them a hundred million dollars in EBITDA. Okay, so it only brings in a hundred million bucks into drive time. Okay, so if you're running a company, and I'll give you an example, um, go back to like the WeWork show, and your company's not profitable, you make your core business. So what do you, you do? Merges and acquisitions. And this isn't new. You do M and A on things. You bring in you you buy revenue to bring into the company to increase your revenues, and maybe it, it staves off bankruptcy, or maybe it makes your balance sheet look stronger. Maybe, you know, maybe in a year or two, and again, this could be a scenario, when, if they get this deal done, which it looks like they're going to, maybe they go for another junk bond offering in six months and like, look, man, like, you know, we own all these entities. Now we own a fully vertical car company with um, a auction company. Then maybe they can sell junk debt. Maybe, okay. It, it adds more kind of a, a, a confidence case to the kind of scheme. Okay, in my, again, this is a, a scheme, in my, my opinion. Okay, but again, if they buy this, it only gets $100 million in revenue. And if they if they sold their coupon at 10%, and again, it's an unknown. I don't know what they sold it at. Maybe they sold it at 5. 1 plus 1 doesn't equal 2. They still lose money because they got to service the debt. Okay, so I want you to think from a different perspective. These guys were willing to offer up $3.2 billion at 10% originally. That was the original coupon or 10.2, whatever it was, which means $320 million a year in serviceable debt on that note. And they were gonna buy a Dessa that only 
It was going to give them a hundred, a hundred um, million in, in, in EBITDA. These guys aren't stupid, right? So, so what what was going on here? I think they thought that they, there is a greater fool. Okay, the market most of the time, especially in this kind of, relies on a greater fool theory, right? I think they were so confident that the market was going to not see through this. Okay, maybe that was masked by again the used car boom, right? Used cars are on fire, like nothing's going to happen bad. You know, we're we're going to be okay, kind of situation, right? But nobody wanted this, so even issuing this, the Dessa acquisition did nothing. It did, it doesn't put a dent in any of this. Okay, so they did it themselves. Okay, so let's that's that's number one, and I want you to think about that as you go into this and, and look at and analyze this company as to the motive on this. You know, you shouldn't do that um, because your acquisition target's not going to make you money. It's going to you have more interest expense on it, but it keeps the the scheme alive. For a while, and again, this guy called it as Ponzi scheme. His words, not mine. Um, <laughs> let me go through a few more things and talk about it. Okay, so these guys have been losing money for a while. This isn't the first time they've they've lost it. Okay, these guys have been losing for a long time. I think this is all by design. Okay, I think the public entity was designed to give them access to capital markets. Okay, it's smart. It's a really, it's clever, right? I mean, these guys aren't the first guys to analyze Wall Street and how you can finesse things, right? I mean. You had the book Enron, the smartest guys in the room. I think this is why this guy started, in my opinion, here, where he goes, um, what did he say? Ernie is the smartest guy in the room. He is. This guy's smart. Trust me. These guys are re really bright. I've only met him a few times, and both times I met him, um, yeah, you should just see, you can just tell the guy knows what he's doing. So, again, there's a lot of other sketchy stuff here, too, and I'm not going to go through all of it. I want to keep it high level here. There's a lot of other issues with how they structure their no to their cars, okay? So all this, basically what it's saying is, and the too long didn't read version is, they lose money, okay? And, and this guy's explaining how they lose money. So a lot of you guys going back to the argument of, well, you know, the used car boom is crushing it. You know, this guy's talking about how they bought this, you know, this company, um, company staying power. It's a moat. Like Carvana is really my... To rent cars. So there's all this nonsense. Okay, so look, and this goes back to general investing stuff, and I want to talk about it briefly with this. Everybody can talk about the used car market or have them having a moat by barring, buying a Dessa. The, the Carvana short thesis is real simple. It all comes down to math in this company. They are A, out of money. It's, it's factual. One plus one does not equal two in Carvana's case. It equals zero. This is a zero in this company. Okay? It goes to zero. The only way they get out of this okay, is if they can raise more debt down the road. If they can find a greater fool to, to, to a more junk debt or they do another secondary offering to shares, um, that's one of the only ways. And I was talking to actually this guy in DMs and somebody else who's a pretty well-known event-driven um, manager about this, and he had some ideas as well, again, because when, when a lot of these bigger shorts are trading the markets, um, they're always looking at like, what, what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? Okay. And I was looking at this too, but again, I'm not a big short. I don't got a bankroll like these guys do. So I can only play it this certain level to this type of stuff. Okay. So again, he was talking more about this here um, when the money basically collapses. Okay. Now he talked about this here. Um, uh, they didn't raise equity in 2021, negative by hundred. So they were negative cash flow there. They raised equity recently. I just showed you uh, the end of the move, fast break thing. The first thing you, when you're out of stop digging, um, and I agree with them. They are a loan, loan originator. Let me explain this too. Okay. This is another part of the scheme. The loan company, the loan is privately held. Okay. So I think it's 80 or 90% of the loans they write on Carvana go to their private loan company that they own with another company. You can look at it out of New York or something. It's a hedge fund. Okay. So even if this entity goes BK, all the loans have been sold here. And these are all securitized. Okay, so if this company goes bankrupt and they've sold, let's say, a billion dollars in loans that charge an average interest of 10%, whatever, five, who cares about the interest, this entity still makes money, regardless of what happens with Carvana. Because they've just used this as a, again, he, this guy did such a good job on this article. You guys should read this. I'll, I'll link it. Um, they just use the loan company and other things as a way Carvana is just the front. And again, that's what essentially it was masquerade. And he did a good job of this. He talks about um, 
look, he, he even talked about, I didn't even read this part of it, but he talks about how um, they use basically a team of like, you know, Stanford guys, Harvard, Harvard, like to basically put on the front. Okay. And, and again, I think this was a front. He talked about it. A pretty good job hyping a false misleading disruptor narrative, which I agree with. Carvana is not a disruptor. It, it's, it's, it's a car, it's a used car company, right? Just like we work, wasn't going to change the world. It's a goddamn office company, okay? Carvana just sold used cars, and you, you can't walk up to the vending machine and put your credit card in, and like a Coca-Cola, a car pops out. It's not how this stuff works. Um, and they did a really good job of this, okay? This guy just did, a, again, he did a really good job of explaining this. Um, I had a lot of thoughts on this for a while, but again, you know, to make videos like this or to write about it, I've got to feel compelled. And now that the stock's in the lows, I think it's interesting to talk about and explain it because, yeah, there's just a lot of bad takes on this. Okay. So, again, going back to this here, um, he talks about fraud only exists in hindsight. Okay. So, I don't think it's hindsight. I think people have known about this, but you've got to get the rest of the market to realize this. And I'm going to talk about this next and kind of go through a few things um, and talk about it here. Okay. So, again, he this is back six months ago he talked about this. Um, but again, the company's been out of money and we're going to go through a few things and we'll, we're going to start to wrap this up and tie it all in together. Okay. So look, they bought their own debt on this company. Um, I'm going to go through one more thing on this here. Let's go through. And again, everybody's talking about this today because it's finally like hit this. Um, but let's, there's one more tweet here. I want to go through. Maybe it's this one. No, uh, where is it at? Sorry. Give me one moment. So we went through this here. Uh, no, it's from Zero Hedge. Again, I'll try to find it here in a second. But the point is, they were talking about one thing here where, again, JP Morgan couldn't sell their debt on this, okay? And again, I think this is it, it right here. Okay, so. This didn't sell. And again, this a lot of this stuff was making the round last week. Um, and they were talking about this, okay? So, huge problem. The markets know this. Debt markets are seeing this. Uh, it's going to cause a problem from the stock, okay? So, the next thing I'm going to go over here quickly to talk about is you know, the stock price and, and, and stock price targets, okay? So how long can they keep this up? I mean, look, it's hard to say. I mean, it might be eight months. It might be 10 months. It's tough to say. I will say this from years of trading this stock and waiting for something like this, to the masses to see this. One of the things from a trader's perspective, which I confident in lending insight to is this. I haven't seen this type of put option volume at all on this name in a long time, okay? This is literally not traded to this extent. This is the first day I've ever seen this is implied volatility that's through the roof. The word is out on this name. Okay. All the day traders are trading this, the market seeing this, it's finally kind of coming to the light. People are seeing what's happening. You can see it in the implied volatility across every single chain. This is happening. Now, whether it's the April's or whether it's the May's, it doesn't matter. I have not seen this type of option activity on the stock. Like I said, and probably Jesus. Four years. I remember four years ago trading this thing when I thought it was in trouble at like ninety dollars a share, and I was trying to buy put options, and I was like thirty of the open interests. Okay, so there's nobody on this. The market's just starting to see this um, as a problem. So again, that's going to kind of do it for the video here. I know it's a lot to unravel, and I'm going to link this here and kind of go through this. But it's real simple. If I could give you a conclude concluding um, discussion on this, it's real simple. The company's been out of money, okay? They have been out of money for a while since back in 2021. This gentleman was talking about it. The way they're going to get out of money was basically issuing secondary shares, which again, 50% of those shares were bought by the father. And again, in my opinion, as a sign of confidence for the market to say, look, you know, the house isn't on fire. Come on in. Everything's cool, okay? Then they went out to the market and said, look, we need $3.2 billion in, um, in uh, a Debt note, the market said no dice, we're not taking it. They finance $1.5 billion themselves, okay? It's only a matter of time until A, they have to raise more money for this company to operate, or B, this company goes bankrupt. There is no other solution to this, period. If you are playing the used car market or want to play it, this is not the entity to be buying it. Just because it's down from $325 to 60 bucks does not make this a value play, Okay. When you're investing in companies looking at value ideas like this, especially stuff like, you know, a disruptor in the car space, you've got to look deeper under the hood, which is, again, I'm going to explain the last few things here, which is why I don't do a lot of growth investing in the markets anymore, because it's very tough to do because 
on surface level, a lot of companies look really good. PEs look good, things look good, but the unknowns of how companies operate makes it very tough, at least for me, to commit the time to research them, to, to put money into it. I always find it easier in my personal investing and trading to use short-term volatility to trade, whether it's futures, inflection, some event-driven stuff, short selling like this here and there to make money in the markets. This stuff works when you understand it. Growth investing works, but again, situations like this will trap people. It'll trap people like this. Um, again, if you go going back to YouTube, I mean, even Yahoo Finance is talking about nonsense like this. Okay, this is a, a, a guaranteed zero. And you just have to look at the numbers to understand this stuff. Again, doesn't come from opinion of used car sales or, you know, they're a disruptor. None of that stuff matters. If the company doesn't have money to operate, you can't pay people. It's literally that simple and direct. So, look, I know this video was long. I promised it was going to be long at the end of this. Um, I'll link some of the stuff here to go through this. If it doesn't make sense, research this if you want to research. I think this stuff is interesting to see because, number one, I think they did a good job of this. I mean, I mean... All things aside, yeah, there's a lot of sketchy things going on, but these guys are really smart, and it's it's always interesting to see how, how they weave the web and these type of things. I always thought Enron, again, I obviously don't promote what they did or think it was good, but those guys are smart, man, and these guys are really, really smart too, and it's just interesting to see this stuff um, on Wall Street. Again, it won't be the last time this stuff, this stuff happens. It'll continue to happen, and going forward, I'm looking to see how Carvana plays out because it's going to be interesting to say the least. The problem from trading it right now is, look, like I've, we've seen already, the day traders are on this now. Okay, the options volumes to the roof. Pretty much, you know, everybody's a professional on this now. Right? Whereas like, you know, six months ago, this gentleman was talking about, a lot of the other analysts were talking about, about this, but um, everybody's going to be professional on this stock for the next six months. Okay, so it's going to be tough to trade right now because IV is high. Um, but it's probably a net short on this um, heading into the next six months. So that's going to do it for me. Make sure to like, subscribe. If you guys have questions, you can head to the website, uh, thelongvol.com. I publish a report uh, every two weeks. I put this report out. Um, I talk about inflections, event-driven volatility. Uh, I guess Carvana would be a mix of event-driven trading uh, with the bond offering failing and the preferreds and the inflections and volatility as well. Okay, so look, some of this stuff is cool to learn about. It, like I said at the start of the video, it might help you to invest. It might not help you to invest, but at least you can learn something to understand how things work to prevent you from getting into traps like Carvana because this is a trap for most people if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. If you're still watching the video, make sure to like, subscribe. I appreciate when you guys like and comment. Um, if you guys disagree, agree, leave comments below. I'm happy to debate them as long as they're not ridiculous comments. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.